got Celtics owner Wick Grosbeck with us alongside Chris Mannix. Amina Smith here with you. And Wick, the energy is high in here inside of TD Garden. You hear the fans in the background. Game one, the energy was high as well. Just describe what the atmosphere has been like so far during these playoffs. I mean, it's a total meltdown. It's Boston at its best. Uh, the guys come here to play. They choose the Celtics, like Al Horford said specifically, because of the fans. And he's so glad to be back. And the fans make a huge difference. If that game was in Brooklyn on Sunday, might have gone the different way. So the fans take credit. They should. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people, they probably think that the fans, maybe the home court advantage maybe doesn't matter. But just how much of a home court advantage do the Celtics have playing these first two games inside of TD Garden? I mean, we earned it. We fought for it. We, uh, we fought all the way to the end. We won the last game to make sure we were up in two. And bring it on from there. That's what I like about it. We got the, we're going confidently forward, and we'll take what comes. Wick, a lot's been said and written about how Ime Udoka was the right coach for this team at the right time. I don't know that enough's been said about how Brad Stevens was the right general manager, president of this team for the right time. A lot of the moves he's made, I'm not so sure, as great a GM as Danny Ainge was, he would have made, whether it's giving up draft capital for certain types of players. Why, why has he been the right fit for this team, and what's impressed you about the job he's done this year? Well, I've known Brad for, what, eight years now, or eight, eight plus, and when Danny came to me and said, I'm stepping down, I had to think of what to do, and we could have done a search and brought someone in that I didn't know or but I had Brad right there brilliant guy and a partner by nature he knows what to do how to build a team how to coach a team and uh, but you know to go hire a coach with Brad as the GM or president of basketball to me that was like I want Brad still here um, and we'll get a coach but he I need a partner in the GM job and someone to have confidence in his brilliance and he's brilliant, and he's a partner, he's a great guy, and he's all in on the Celtics. He seemed to be ready to swing for the fences this year, to be a very, he was very aggressive from day one, getting Al Horford, making the trade for Derek White. Um, what have you seen there? Well, that's, I mean, that's our mantra. Look, I, I, I said at the EMA press conference, I said, Brad and I talked today, and we agreed we're going to win Banner 18 or die trying. And I said that in, in 2002 when I came in, we're going to win Banner 17 or die trying, and I'm still here. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's the way we roll around here, and Brad's all in on that, and EMA's all in on that, and that's, uh, that's the DNA of the organization. I want to ask you one question about Marcus Smart. Um, everybody knew coming into this year he was a great defensive player. He was rewarded for that in winning Defensive Player of the Year. I don't think people necessarily believed that he could be your primary playmaker, that he could be the starting point yeah. guard of this team. What did you think of that coming into the season, and how much has his success in that aspect surprised you? Well, you know, whenever Marcus comes up and I talk about him or, or listen to what the experts are saying, I, you know, he's part of the DNA as well of the team, okay? He's somebody we just need to have. In whatever position the basketball experts want him in is fine with me. I'm not going to dictate that stuff, but I want Marcus here. He He's here, and he has lived up to or exceeded every expectation. And we've heard people all season long, you know, on different programs talking about splitting up Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Just how important is it to see this pairing through, not only this season, but for seasons to come? Well, the, we can see now. I mean, I've seen them for, you know, three, four years now, and that's the way it is. They're not, they're not going anywhere. And we, they just both signed long-term deals. They want to be here. They're here. Enough said. No more need to debate it. Yeah. You're, you're now... You got one win. Uh, you got one win in the playoffs, and you're looking like a team that can compete for a championship this year. You go back to late December, and you know what this team was going through back then. How surprised are you? Are you surprised that this team is here right now? Yeah, I am surprised. I mean, I, I just I told the guys early in the year, or before it even started, I said this year it was choppy. Last year, now we have new players. We've lost a couple to the Knicks, you know, and we got other guys coming in. I don't know how it's going to go. Don't stress. You give it everything, but you know this year could be a building year. Let's build, and then we turned on the you know we stepped on the gas halfway through. It feels like plenty changed at the trade deadline. What was your message to the front office at the trade deadline to kind of turn things around for this organization? Go all in. Let's yeah. go. And the same will be true in June. The same will be true next February. The same will be true next June. We're going for it. You can't be anything but all in in Boston. You yeah, have to you be have all to. in all the time. I'm born and raised, you man. You can't be. You're right. You know that. <laughs> That's how you get a ring. Yes, sir. That is how you get a ring. Banner 18 or die trying. Thanks so much, Wick, for joining us here at the desk.